Hey guys and welcome to the render interface overview for sampling in Blender. Sampling is a cycle specific setting that determines how many times Cycles decides to calculate the light essentially before it's done rendering. And the more times it does that, the more times it samples, the more accurate the lighting will be. If you don't sample enough, you'll notice it has a kind of grainy texture and I'll go ahead and show you. So I specifically prepared a scene that looks a little bit grainy. And so we have the default settings here for 128 samples. And if you zoom in here, this looks pretty okay from far away, but if you zoom in, there's clearly some, you know, graininess along the edge of those shadows. You can kind of tell it's just sort of, it looks fuzzy, which is not exactly what we want. We want it to look soft, but not fuzzy, right? So there's clearly not enough samples around these edges. So let's go ahead and up this, maybe double. Let's try 300, right? Try 300. I'm going to go ahead and change this slot number to slot 2, and that'll allow us to store both renders. So I'm going to render this out now. And now that it's at 300, you'll notice that it's actually not any better. It's a little bit better, but um, I think it could definitely be a lot better. So we're just going to bring this up to 1,000 and render that. We're going to overwrite the 300 one. I don't think it's really worth keeping that one. But as you can see here, if we compare, yeah, there we go. If we compare the 1,000 samples with the 128 samples that we had in the first one, you'll see that this looks a lot softer and not nearly as fuzzy or grainy as the first render. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the difference as soon as this finishes rendering. There we go. So let's zoom in here, look at the difference here. I'm going to press J to switch between the two. And so right now I'm in slot one, right now I'm in slot two. So this is the 1000 sample frame. And then this is the 128 sample frame. So that's what sampling does. It makes a big difference in terms of the graininess of the image and can essentially make or break your scene, depending on if you have that noise or not. So it's very important to know what sampling does. That's the basic gist of it. Upping your samples or lowering your samples is a great way to control the quality of your render in cycles. But um, yeah, if you do preview, preview is at 32, you can actually hit shift Z and that will render out and stop at 32 samples. So you can see the sample numbers up here, that's at 32 samples and it's still grainy obviously because it's only at 32, even at 128 it was grainy. So 32 is going to be much worse. Now if we do zero, I want to show you what happens when we do zero. When we do zero, the samples will actually just keep going and it'll be infinite. So as long as you keep your scene still, it'll keep, keep going. If I move it a little bit, it'll reset to one or whatever, however times I move it. But if I just let it keep going and I keep it at zero, it'll actually keep going. There's no limit to it anymore. So it'll reach 32 eventually. You know, there we go. It passed up 32. Eventually it'll go to 128. And eventually, you know, it, if I left it for long enough, it'd probably go up to a thousand something um, if I wanted to. So this is a good way. I usually keep it at zero. So I, at least I can control how long I want the samples to render for just to see if I can get any further, or any better. But obviously you don't want to let it go on forever. You just want to test it out, but it's nice to have the preview on zero. Um, another thing is the seed. So the seed is pretty interesting. Seed basically means that there's going to be a slightly different random pattern for your frame for the noise. So if you have to have a little bit of noise, um, it's best to have the seed change in each frame if you can. Otherwise, the noise will stay consistent as a specific pattern over every single one of your frames. So I've seen that happen a few times where in your cycles render, you'll have an animation and there's a little bit of noise. And then that noise keeps the same pattern throughout each one of the frames. And so it kind of looks like there's like a texture on top of the entire image, sort of imprinting on top of the uh, the colors there, which is not exactly, it's kind of distracting in my opinion. Some people will try to alleviate that by simply clicking this button here, which helps a lot. It basically uses different seed values at different frames. And so the noise patterns will be random and therefore it'll seem a little bit more staticky, but it'll also blend in a little bit more. So you won't notice the noise as much if you turn on this seed value, which animates the seed value randomly. You can also manually set the seed value. If you're just doing a still frame, this is typically a pretty good idea. But for the most part, when you're doing an animation, you just want to click this time button and it'll animate the seed per frame. So that's pretty helpful. So this light sampling value is actually there to terminate the light values a little bit faster. The light rays will keep going until they reach under this threshold of light and then they'll terminate probabilistically. Um, Basically, you, all you have to know is that it makes your render slightly faster if you up the number, but it will make it more noisy and less accurate. Um, so usually default is fine. 0 0.01 is okay. If you turn it to zero, it will never ignore the lights. It'll just have all the lights terminate on their own and keep going until zero themselves. Um, but it's a lot slower to render. So, And then we have the pattern settings, subble or correlated multi-jitter. A lot of people say there's not much difference. Some people say there's a slight difference in certain materials. You can play around with this a little bit if you want to, but it doesn't 
make a huge difference on your render. It's mostly the same. But um, just keep that in mind in case you want to try it out. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the sampling overview for the render interface in Blender.